Before we dive into the action plan of the left, we need to define some terms. First, social Darwinism takes Darwin's primary idea, survival of the fittest, and applies it to humans. So if animals and plants are in a constant struggle for survival and dominance where the strong survive and the weak die, why not humans? Why can't it be the same thing? After all, humans are nothing special. We are just the more intelligent animal on the planet. Uh, there is no God. There is no objective truth. There's no absolute morality or anything. Uh, there's nothing outside of ourselves that we need to try to align ourselves with. So if we are completely free in a chaotic world, then... I guess we probably are in a fight against everybody else. We're in a constant competition. Better grab what we can and pull ourselves up to the top of the hierarchy. Otherwise, we're probably going to be mulch. The next term we need to take a look at is amorality, which is different from immorality. I'm an immoral man. I recognize that there is some kind of standard that I should be applying to myself, that I have a certain way that I should be behaving toward you as we deal with each other, and I fail to meet that. That's immorality. Amorality doesn't recognize that there is any kind of standard at all. That's just kind of behaving as you will. It's not about should or ought. This is about can I? Do I have the power to do this? Okay, then I did it. There is no you know, greater reason why I did anything. An amoral person doesn't recognize right or wrong, good or bad. It's just about benefit and detraction, pain or pleasure. Morality is actually a weakness that apparently some people have imposed on themselves, where they've decided to limit their own actions in order to kind of, I don't know, smooth the gears as they're dealing with other people, and that's just ridiculous. Uh, that's going to actually limit them, and that's something that we can use against them in the action plan coming down below. Since an amoral person is only concerned about a favorable end result, the means to get there don't really matter. He can swap vices for virtues. So he could have treachery instead of honor. He could have unbridled violence instead of reserved strength. And he could have scorn and derision instead of actual wisdom. Any of this sound familiar? Uh, this is not a matter of having principles and then falling from them. This person doesn't really have any principles at all. Uh, this person might feign some of them in order to trick others around them but this is not a matter of actually having them on the inside. Now, anybody that's in this kind of system uh, that feels like they are in this constant competition with everybody else in the world is going to feel vulnerable 24-7. So our kind of fictional character that we talked about here, Andy, uh, he is probably going to try to latch onto some kind of tribe. He wants to find affinity with others. He wants to grab onto others that will help protect him and help to pull him up to the top in a dominance hierarchy, which is how he sees the whole world. Uh, and remember that we have a common enemy that we're dealing with. Everybody that's in one of these tribes that you know they've kind of put in their own heads, they're going to be looking at all the other tribes and see where they stack up. And they're going to be mostly concerned about whoever is up at the top. Uh, this is going to be what we call the common enemy. It's anybody that has the greater power and wealth in their area. As we go through my notes on the action plan of the left, some of these steps won't make sense unless you keep something in mind. A social Darwinist is only interested in being at the top of the heap. And that's a relative thing. It doesn't really matter if they're at the top of a low heap or the top of a high heap. So working your way up to the top, like having a more successful business than everybody else, that is the same and actually more difficult than just grabbing everybody else and pulling them down. So if we can harm everybody else above us and in that way bring everybody below, then that's going to be just as good as working our way to the top. Now, a bunch of you have already figured out that this is not the same and that this will have some detrimental results and we're going to get into that in another video. Well, let's go ahead and launch into this thing. The first thing we need to do before we can conquer is divide. We need to take the common enemy and break it all up into different tribes and get people fighting against each other. So we need to tell women that they are oppressed by men. We need to tell people of one skin color they're being oppressed by people of another skin color or nationality or whatever. And in a lot of cases, there has been oppression. And the interesting part is that if you look back in history, a lot of it, especially from the late 19th century up to the 20th century, has been done by progressives. Uh, the people that espouse these things, the people that are the most vocal about it, are the ones that actually were the perpetrators. Uh, they were the oppressors in the past, and they'd like to pretend right now that that wasn't them, that that's somebody else, and they'd like to point the finger, get somebody else attacking uh, another group. 
And then as long as we have that infighting going, then we can start to reduce this structure. Next, we need to control the message because a lot of this is based on misinformation. We have to tell people that, no, it wasn't us that did bad things. We're really, really good. And so if we can control the media, which is going to be the news media, it's going to be Hollywood, if we can control the stories, uh, if we can get into the schools and just kind of misrepresent everything, flip the script, tell everybody we, what we want them to know without really having to back it up much, as long as we have good you know, talking points, we can just say that such and such did something. And then in the minds of people that aren't interested enough to actually look back into history and figure out what actually happened, then hey, that's gospel. You might have noticed that there is a big push to retcon everything. If you look at movies that are based on real life, you'll notice that there are just massive fabrications. They're going to completely rewrite what people did. And actually this applies to fiction as well. So if you have a character who had ideals that you liked in the past, then what you're going to do with these reboots, these remakes, or these ridiculous sequels is you're going to take those people and pull them down. You're going to reduce them and destroy the past. And actually that line pretty much came up in the Star Wars sequels, didn't it? Uh, kill it if you have to. Uh, what is it? Destroy the past. Kill it if you have to. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. Where they got rid of some of the characters that we actually you know found to be very interesting likable and aspiring to some of those higher virtues like you know luke skywalker by the end and han solo and these you know that kind of changed the way that they were and became something better something that could actually fight against this evil empire and we changed it all around and made something really dumb out of it It's not enough to keep the progressive message churning 24-7 in magazines, in the news, in TV shows, schools. What we need to do is censor the other side completely. We need to make sure that the truth can't get out, that there isn't an alternative viewpoint. So even if it isn't a matter of you know, truth about something, sometimes just an ability to look at it from a different angle can be harmful, so we're gonna get rid of that. And that's where big tech comes in. This is the super highway now. This is how information is disseminated in the modern world. And these people that are supposed to be the common carriers are becoming publishers. They are choosing to edit out certain things that they would prefer not to be there or restricting the dissemination in some other way. And this is what we call cancel culture. Not only can we get rid of messages, but we can actually get rid of messengers. There are certain people that are precluded from uh, actually getting onto the public platform. Platform. If anybody wants to find out what a certain guy has to say now, they're going to have to go out and actually seek that person out, maybe on their own personal website, if they're allowed to have one. Uh, since a lot of these highways are controlled, like Amazon Web Services, uh, people think that they can have a website with their own content out there. That's the way that things traditionally have been done. But no, uh, people like Amazon Web Services can just cut that off and you have to try to trickle your way further down and find avenues where you can speak. Cancel culture goes farther than that though. This isn't just about killing the message, this is about killing the messenger himself. So we can do things like get him out of the job market. Maybe this person can't find a job again, can't get credit. Maybe using government, you can force this person to not have uh, certain things that others would. Like think about Obama and Lois Lerner and what they did with the IRS, preventing groups that were on the right side of the aisle from uh, getting 501c3 status. So if they wanted to protect more of their money as a nonprofit, they couldn't, whereas the leftists certainly could. Cancel culture has many different levels and it affects people in different ways depending on where they live. Uh, for me, since I live in Oklahoma, I'm relatively free. I can do kind of whatever I want. Uh, the biggest cancel culture that I run into directly affecting me is going to be uh, these messages that I produce on this kind of content. Um, YouTube will misapply its own rules to prevent the dissemination of what I do. And they're gonna do it in stealth ways and more kind of straightforward ways to keep you from finding out about some of the things that I do over here and I'm not even going to use those words, which is a, you know part of the cancel culture. I'm kind of self-censoring myself so that I can get this message out to you guys. But then there are different levels of, of this cancel culture as well, uh, where if you live in one of the, the British colonies, former British colonies, there are people that have probably been in jail for just saying certain things that went against the progressive message. 
The actions I've described so far have been really unethical, but for the most part they have been legal. We can start to descend from here. We can get into the outright cheating, like paying and accepting bribes, tweaking elections. There could be selective justice. You could just straight up lie in court or wherever about whatever. And these are things that have happened from the beginning of time, but we're just seeing a kind of an uptick, especially from one side of things. One kind of cheating that we've gotten used to in the West because it's been with us for so long has been the redistribution of wealth and this is one that still rankles at me because I see those paychecks and I see how much comes out. It's where you literally take money from the producers, from the people that actually you don't like. These are the people that are competing, that are uh, gonna be fighting against you in this Darwinian struggle. Uh, you're gonna take their money, you're gonna take a chunk of it and give it to people that you favor, people that will help boost you in whatever way that you see. And if that isn't violent enough, you can actually get uh, truly physically violent. So we can have irrational confrontations, we can have people getting up in other people's faces, uh, we can physically impede movement of certain folks, and we can really escalate from there. Things can certainly get violent, and I'll just put up a couple of pictures to remind you guys of where things tend to go. Now, there is one kind of cooperation that uh, folks in this Darwinian struggle will uh, do. They will actually form alliances. And I use the word alliances uh, very particularly. This is actually the word that they use. Have you seen this stupid word called allyship that's just been invented? It's not friendship. It's not... Um, I don't know, some kind of cooperation. That's not really the word that they use. They use this allyship. And I think that it's a perfect word because it refers to two people that don't have the same interests that will temporarily uh, work with each other in order to accomplish a certain mission. And this is where we start pointing toward the doom of the left, toward the doom of the woke, that's going to occur in video number four. Uh, but what we need to do is find other tribes that are in our similar predicament, and we, need, we may actually hate these folks, but we're gonna find them useful, and so we're going to try to back each other up and build each other up and kind of push the way toward the top. Uh, we need to grab onto higher rank tribes, for example, and this is kind of a mutually beneficial, parasitic relationship. I'm not exactly sure how this goes. It's not quite a symbiosis uh, because, again, these people don't really like each other. But big tech can be a tribe. Uh, these are people that they think that they are at the top of the Darwinian heap. And you can see this in a lot of the language that they use. If you listen to a talk from a CEO of uh, Google or whatever, these people do consider themselves to be kind of the pinnacle of civilization. Look at Bill Gates and his population control ideas and all that. He considers himself to be the next step in the evolution of humanity, a lot like Margaret Sanger. But what he needs to do is to get popular support from people that are the underdogs. So he is going to promote the message of some of these weaker tribes and uh, try to elevate them and push them to the top. And then these underdogs, because they have the ear of, you know, decent moral or at least emotional people, um, they are going to lend their support to the big tech company and say, oh no, these guys are great. They have your best interests at heart. Uh, look, you know, they're taking care of me. Look at me. And they can push that group up as well. So together they can uh, start to rise above. A business can also look virtuous by creating a diversity, equity, and inclusion panel or office. That's DEI or DIE, I think it might be spelled in some countries. Uh, but these guys are the representatives of the woke. They're the representatives of tribalism. And they are there to actually kind of break up your company and uh, create internal strife. And again, we'll get into that in video number four. But uh, they think that it makes them look good for now. And to some people, it certainly will. Uh, you get the approval of the lower ranked tribes. They can kind of, you know, boost you up since they have that kind of underdog status to them. An alliance that you absolutely have to make, no matter which tribe you're in, is you have to make friends with the media. And the media desperately want to make friends with you. Uh, the guys in the news, the people that are writing the stories, the, the people in Hollywood, TV show writers, uh, these guys want to be accepted. They want the seal of approval. They want to feel virtuous. And uh, they are constantly looking to grab on to whoever has power uh, to move them up toward the top and so they're going to favor certain messages over uh, another and this is really one of those great symbiotic relationships very destructive but uh, it's good symbiosis for these people at least at the moment and these guys will tell false stories if you'd like them to. They can suppress whatever stories are out there. So if there is a message that uh, is not 
you know, if it's detrimental to the woke ideology, they don't even have to say it. It's great. They already own the airwaves. They own the channels. And if they don't say it, then it's like it didn't even exist. Now, one of the alliances that is going to be a little bit tricky to deal with and that we desperately all need is going to be the masses. You have to have just normal people. These are people that are going to have a moral backbone to them. They're going to have a moral structure or they're going to be uh, very emotional at least. There are plenty, plenty of people that have been uh, brought down by woke teachings in schools and all that, and they really don't have much of a moral structure anymore. They think they do, but uh, for the most part, they're acting on emotions. And you can manipulate these people by using the media by uh, manipulating the message, by keeping it you know, 24-7 in front of people's eyes, by censoring others, you can trick the masses into voting the way that you want, doing the things that you want. And these are people that actually, if you look at the elitists, you know, the, the, the woke people that are currently in the higher echelons, or if you look at the, you know, the folks in academia, they actually hate the masses. They hate the, you know, the unthinking people that are just going around working and, you know, earning a living and doing all that. Uh, they really have a lot of disdain for them, but these people are very useful at the moment. And, you know, once everybody in these, you know, tribes have worked their way up to where they need to be, then yeah, they don't need to have all of them. They can just keep around the useful tools that they have. Uh, that's kind of end game in places where this has really taken over. That's where we get into the concept of virtue signaling. A social progressive, a social Darwinist, is full of hatred, envy, greed, avarice, ambition, and it's painfully obvious as you watch their actual actions as they try to claw their way to the top to get control over everything and everybody. But they would prefer that you not know that, so they're going to use whatever means are at their disposal, the various news media out there, uh, storytelling in you know TV shows and all that. They're going to try to trick the masses into thinking that they are virtuous people when they really, really are not. And mostly they're going to do it by pointing at somebody else and saying, look how bad that guy is. They're going to point toward the common enemy that we've talked about, and they're going to say, this guy is really, really bad. And by contrast, I'm just great. Now in the next video, we're going to take a look at some individual pieces of evidence that point toward the, the parts of the action plan that I've mentioned here. Don't just take my word for it. Um, you've probably already seen a bunch where you know this action plan lines up with what's been going on out in the world. If you have any individual pieces of evidence you'd like to throw into the comments below, please do. If you think that I'm correct about what I'm talking about here, yeah, please mention it. If you think I'm way off base, please put it in the comments down below. Let's get this conversation going because I'm much more interested in truth than being right. Thank you to everybody that has made these videos possible, including patrons of the destructive arts right here. Uh, we have a bunch of other videos that we're getting into related to optics, and uh, we're going to get into a really neat series coming up here pretty soon. So don't miss out. We have all kinds of content all over the spectrum. It's messy, but uh, these are things that I think are really important on the practical side and you know, kind of on the, the broader scale and you know, how we interface with the world. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So, you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage!